Welcome to Selling and Influencing. My name is Tom Lai and I'm a guest faculty member at Rockhurst University. And I'm thrilled to partner with Barnett Helsberg and George Ferguson to talk to you about Dan Pink and his book, To Sell as Human. Now a little bit about me so you know where I fit in. I grew up here in Kansas City. I went to Rockhurst High School. I went on to Creighton University. My wife and I have a junior in college and a senior in high school. My dad and my sister went to Rockhurst University, as did many of my uncles and extended family members. I have a great deal of respect and admiration for Rockhurst, and I'm grateful that Mr. Helsberg has invited me to be a guest faculty member for this course. My company that I work at is Merck Pharmaceuticals, and I work in the vaccine division. Just a few things that might connect to things that you've also done in your career. I worked in sales as a representative in Rapid City, South Dakota. I spent time as a hospital rep at a major academic medical center called the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I've led meetings and marketing, promotion. I've been a district sales manager over a team of folks. I've worked in medical education. I'm currently a director of commercial operations where the team that I work with is about 70 people spanning 16 states in the North Central United States. And in addition to that, we have about 30 extended teammates that also work for Merck Vaccines but aren't on our direct team and we partner with all the time. So I'm absolutely in the business of sales and persuasion. I'm very thrilled to add Rockers University as something very important to my ongoing growth and development. I love being part of this class. I look forward to seeing you in person. All right, so what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna to connect to Dan Pink's book, To Sell as Human. Thanks to Barnett Helsberg, I had a chance to shake Dan Pink's hand and meet him in person when Barnett and a number of folks from the Kauffman Foundation brought Dan Pink to Kansas City. In addition to that, I've been to several national, international meetings where we talk about the very best account management and selling techniques that exist, and Dan Pink has been the keynote speaker multiple times. He is phenomenal. Now, why are we talking about Dan Pink, and how does this class all come together? Well, we're gonna give you three pre-work modules to get you ready for the class. They'll each be short in duration, and we'd highly recommend that you've either already read the book or watched Dan Pink on YouTube give this update on To Sell as Human. All right, today is module one, and I'm gonna get us started with Rebirth of a Salesman. Now, there are three chapters to this section. The first is we're all in sales. The second is how do we connect to this concept of sales and persuasion. And the final one talks about the fact that buyers have more information than they've ever had. It's really exploded in the last decade, and that's really, really important for us to understand. All right, this first chapter, chapter one, Pink starts out by asking through market research, what are the top 25 adjectives and interjections people share when asked the question, what do you think about people in sales or selling? And it won't surprise anyone that they're not words we wanna be associated with. The number one word that was prompted through market research was pushy, followed by difficult, yuck, hard, ugh, sleazy, annoying, slimy. He repeated that question and said this time, what picture comes to mind? What image do you have when you think of sales or selling? And again, car salesperson, used car salesperson, person in a suit, slick, pushy suit. Again, not things that we aspire to be affiliated with. So why do we have this aversion to sales? Why do we view salespeople as bad or not good or not something that we would aspire to be? Well, one of the things Pink starts with is this virtual participation. Since we're not together for the pre-read, I'll just ask you to raise your own virtual hand if this fits you. All right, ask yourself these questions and see if you say yes to one or part of them. Number one, do you earn your living by trying to convince others to purchase goods or services? Number two, do you work for yourself or run your own operation, even if it's on the side? And the third question is, do you work in a space that requires elastic skills? So do you cross boundaries or functions? Do you work outside a specialty? Do you do a variety of things throughout the day? Do you do different things each day? If you're doing these things and it requires you to convince or persuade people, then Pink would argue that in his classic definition for this book, that you are in the business of sales. You're in the business of selling and persuading. Uh, and I would argue that we do it all the time in our personal lives too. So I love the model that he proposes and the skills that he shares. And I'm excited to share it with you today. All right, so emptor versus vendor. what does it mean? What we'll ask each person to do is virtually think about a purchase that you made over the past year, something very sizable. I just had an opportunity to help our oldest daughter purchase a car, and so that's fresh in my mind. So what research did we do? 
Well, we used the internet, we used Kelly Blue Book, we talked to people that were driving the types of cars that she was interested in. How did we go about purchasing it? Well, we used some techniques that we've learned over the years so that we could have a good customer experience. We did our research, we used email, we used text message, we minimized the amount of time that we needed to be in the dealership because we didn't want to have that kind of experience. And then who had the advantage? Well, there's no doubt about it. With the amount of information that exists, uh, I think we were equally empowered, both the dealer and us, both the buyer and the seller. In the end, while everything didn't go perfect, we got a really good outcome and I think she's very, very pleased and it was fair for us. So executive summary for this first module and we're almost done. Rebirth of a salesperson. Pink asks us to accept and embrace our role in sales, to adopt the stance of being a collaborator, of problem finding, of asking good questions, of listening. Be clear and short is the third big idea. I will share with you that this is probably the 14th time I've tried to prepare this five minute video. Now the first one was okay, and the ones in between were okay as well, but Pink reminds all of us that word choice really matters. What we say to you, the amount of time we take from you, it all shows and indicates to you how you may or may not want to work with us. So I'm hoping that I did a pretty good five or six minute video. All right, the fourth big idea was make peace with the fact that buyers are smart and they have information. Nobody wants to be manipulated. Remember those adjectives. Practice, practice, practice is the fifth big idea. I'm hoping that you're seeing that I did spend some time practicing and I promise to do it for the other modules as well. And finally, really, really important, it's not gonna go exactly the way we wanted it to. And that's okay. Embrace the positivity, negativity balance. So you're in a space that for every difficult idea or experience that you have, you can remind yourself about two or three or four or five things that actually went really well. And that will keep you going and put you in a space where you can impact business. We are all in the business of persuasion and influence. We're all, as Pink says, in sales. Let's figure out how to be really good at it and to benefit not only humanity and society, but our opportunity to develop ourselves in our career. That's the end of module one. I'll be back soon. Thanks.